Excuse me, everybody. We're going to okay. start a. We have a quorum of PWAB, so we're going to do uh, the quick um, version of our meeting. Um, I'm Rob Live, Public Works Director. I'm going to turn it over to our chair, Rick Deschler, who will uh, start the meeting and then we'll get on the bus. Uh, one thing I want to just remind everybody is we're probably not going to be able to get good coverage of discussions that happen on the bus. So let's wait until we make our stops. Then we'll have a discussion. Talk amongst yourself about social issues while we're traveling, but not about business. Uh, so uh, that way we can keep this as it is a PWAB meeting. Rec and Parks does not have a quorum, so it's not a uh, Rec and Parks meeting. Can I introduce myself? Sorry, Marty? Marty Lamelli, I'm the interim city manager. I've been on the job now for three days. I just want to learn more about the city, and that's why I'm here today, to travel with you guys and see what's going on in the parks. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Chair Deschler. Okay, welcome to the Tuesday, July 18th, 2017 Special Public Works Advisory Board and Recreation and Parks Commission Joint Meeting. Um, there is a quorum of the uh, Public Works uh, Advisory Board, but not sufficient for the uh, Rec and Park Commission. The uh, are there any members of the public that would like to comment at this period, at this time? No members of the public stepping forward? Then we will now adjourn to our, or move to our annual Parks and Rec infrastructure tour, led by our Rob director. <laughs> so um, the plan is to uh, try to get this done in a couple of hours. So we're gonna go to Tidelands Park, the rock area, um, take a look at the bridge um, at the end of Coleman, uh, look at some streets that have been um, worked on recently, and head north to Del Mar Park, um, Cloisters Park, and then back here, and try to finish that by 6 o'clock. Please board. Board! <laughs> 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 We're going down Marina Street now. Uh, Marina Street had its uh, pavement work done in 2013. So this work is about four years old uh, uh, here. And this was a, uh, I believe it was a uh, triple layer um, on this street. I would know that that was, um, if, it, if it doesn't get the... Uh, he has an extra plane, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll be there. We get down there and they say, no, it's only open Saturday and Sunday. Huh. So I didn't know if he was still on there at all. Yeah. Well, you know what happens when it's the very loose guy, so they Really nice facility. 
Everybody knows this is Tidelands Park. Um, we recently did some work on the play area and we're going to take a walk over there to look at the uh, uh, latest features that have been installed there. And Mike can give us a little uh, uh, story about the crack. This way? Lead the way. I thought it was some kind of mechanical thing. <laughs> Yep, I think everybody's here. So, Mike, why don't you discuss what we've done here and uh, some of the improvements we made to the yeah, play area. A couple area. new elements we put into this uh, play area. We had to remove a uh, an old wooden ship-like structure here that had a crow's nest on it. It was just too unsafe. It was, it was falling apart. So we removed that, I think, about three years ago. We came to the Recreation Parks Commission with a couple different ideas for what to replace it with. There was a design approved that included a Kraken. This is actually Octopus Prime, but it's our Kraken. It's our Morro Bay Kraken. Um, another part of the idea included some dolphins next to the next to the pirate ship on the far side, and a balance element. So we've been able to incorporate the, the Kraken and the balance element, which is the floating barrels. We're working toward putting the dolphins in, but prior to that, we need to make the, the existing pirate ship a little bit safer. So we have plans. We have a contract out right now to to put in some compliant handrails. Uh, once we're done with that, we'll see what's left in the bucket of money. And if we can afford some dolphins, we'll put in some dolphins. And the dolphins are uh, like a dolphin They're rider? They're what they call a spring rider. So they'll be a, a, a coil spring or a leaf type spring. So it'll be the only moving element in the player. The rest of it's just an imaginative uh, play structure. And your name and position is? Mike Wilcox, maintenance superintendent. I don't get to speak in public very often. I guess I forgot that part. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions on? Okay, I guess we'll uh, continue on the journey. Next stop will be uh, out at the Ross parking lot. We're now going through uh, Front Street Parking Lot. Front Street Parking Lot. Uh, Front Street. This is Front Street Parking Lot. We did the paving work here in 2012, along with our um, information folks, along with our sewer lift station project. So 
Um, the public restroom there is uh, part of the oper operations building for the uh, public restroom. And uh, uh, we have a lift station there. And then the harbor department has a little bit of a storage yard um, back here too. So this was this is 2012 is when we did this work here. As we're exiting, you can see the uh, location for the uh, Maritime Museum. Uh, the city made some of these improvements here to, uh, for access to our overflow uh, dirt parking lot, uh, known as the Triangle Lot um, here. And uh, the uh, building for the future Maritime Museum is going to be uh, right where those folks are hanging out. No, but we're not yeah, running is, is that parking lot there city property? Yes, it is. No, not, none of them are running it. It's Friday. Oh, is that right? Yes, sir. That's it. Thank you. The lady had lunch with Jay was in Very interesting. Okay. <laughs> That's what I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're now on um, the Embarcadero Road extension heading out to the new uh, pedestrian bridge and uh, traveling alongside the, the bike path and sidewalk that was installed, uh, finished that work in uh, 2015 uh, with help from uh, the uh, federal government in uh, in terms of the byways grant program we got some uh, trail money for that and then our local um, planning agency Solcog also provided some of the funding along with city funds um, paid for this project this is is this property right here city property or state property this, this the, dunes. Dunes, the dunes restoration The property on both sides of the um, road is a patchwork of ownership. Some of it's owned by the city, some of it's owned by Dynergy, some of it's owned by other random people. Uh, so there's not consistent ownership all the way out. Uh, now that bridge will hold a fire truck, won't it? That bridge will hold the fire truck. And a fire truck will fit across the bridge too. I've seen them do that. Uh, and a trolley. <laughs> now they were cleaning fish the other day in here. Or were they baiting? Maybe they were baiting. I didn't watch them real close to see what was going on. Is is that city property? That is Dynergy property. The city leases. Ah. And that's the Harbor Department, so that's the state guy. That's, no, that's our city Harbor Department. That's our city. Yeah. And then the Coast Guard also has a um, spot there. I'm sure everybody has uh, traveled across our new uh, great bridge uh, that links north and south Morro Bay. Uh, rather than uh, <laughs> uh, navigating the planks that used to be down in the creek. Yeah. Beach is crowded today. Yeah. Yeah. We do have, um, <laughs> you can't quite see it, but over there where that orange fencing is, a little bit of an erosional issue from the storms, and we're working with uh, FEMA to get some money to make that stream bank repair along there. On your paperwork from the last meeting, you had a, a picture of the Morrow Creek and erosion area and it said something about tennis courts? The Monty Young tennis courts had the fence that was damaged um, uh, during the storm. But it's not on Morrow Creek. No, it's not on Morrow Creek. it was on that same picture number. I've been looking for the tennis court. <laughs> Are we going to go by Monty Young? No, not on this trip. Oh. That's a, that's a self-guided tour to see the new fence there. We are going to hang at the top of the rock. Sure. <laughs> we're we're wait, just waiting on the permit. <laughs> I don't know. People seem to climb.
I'm up there all the time. Memorial, new memorial benches, so they have the ability to have memorial plaques placed on them. We have a waiting <laughs> list and um, working on a council policy uh, before we release these to the public to um, be able to adopt and memorialize. So um, they'll be probably set up so that multiple folks can adopt a bench, or if somebody wants to adopt an entire bench, they can do that um, also. Um, with the benches, we also added uh, a few fire pits along the way, so we did some some clusters of benches and uh, uh, target rock side uh, also. Um, so these get a fair amount of use um, from what I've seen. Uh, folks gathering, having a little uh, yeah. <laughs> bonfire and enjoying the uh, uh, cool weather uh, with a little bonfire. Um, put these in a couple months ago? Yeah, it's back to the end of last year we got this. End of last year. Yeah, uh, so. We got this little bit of Yeah, you know, it's hard to say. We actually got this fire pit in. So we are out here to use the fire pit. So all of these benches were put in with last year? They're all, none of them are from up there? No, no. These are all brand new uh, benches. The old ones were the wood benches. We were trying to get away from a product that we had to keep continuing to replace uh, boards on. Um, concrete kind of lasts forever. Uh, Who does the uh, cleanup maintenance? Our folks do. We're down here daily picking up uh, stuff out of the fire pit. As far as cleanliness on the benches, you know, mainly the bird food. Yeah, we see people down here, we see volunteers down here yeah. brushing them off. It's, it's, uh, it's not a service that, that the city has the resources to provide. I mean, there's hundreds of benches, benches throughout the city. Yeah. Yeah. This is an adopt the park sort of thing. Yeah, that'll be part of our adopt a park program. Um, one of the issues with the birds here is uh, they get attracted to food, and folks like to come down here and feed the birds. I think we'd have a little bit of less of a uh, bird poop problem if we had a little bit of less bird feeding issue and just remember it's uh, uh, you are subject to the uh, state of California Fish and Wildlife regulations which don't allow feeding of wildlife and the birds are included so um, I would refrain from feeding the seagulls. <laughs> don't look up. Any questions? Nice Is this ever going to be reservable for the public? I've never gotten that far. Right. And there's no fires allowed on the beach. It's only in these containers oh, up top. Fires are only allowed in designated areas, and so these fire pits are. There used to be a fire pit, a metal ring, somewhere in this area uh, that was the only fire ring on the on the Moro Bay. Uh, uh, but How many do we have of these? We have three of these uh, uh, fire pits. We're basically a manhole ring uh, with the holes grouted. So. And then what we did was we 
so that you didn't have to have your fire three foot down in there. Uh, filled them up with some uh, base material so the fire would be closer to where the heat was. Target rock sites? I think they're both over there, yeah. I don't see one down, down there. The other two pits aren't installed yet, Oh, okay. They're still back in the yard. There's a little controversy as to whether this one is going to be remain or not. So. Okay. So there's room to cook a pig under there. There is. Well, no, it's it's full. So. Oh, but you always do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I see a crack right there. Yeah, so these are reinforced concrete manhole rigs. Okay. Hey, Rob, what pulls the trigger on, on the other two coming in or the other one? Is, are we just waiting for time? Time. time. Yeah. yeah. Resources. Let's we'll see how much people can play in or don't no, just, no, no, we're, we're done. We're, we're done with that. Part we're done process. testing it. We're yeah. ready to install it. It's just, uh, it's just getting the fuzzy man power. Oh. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, let's continue on, otherwise we're going to be here till dark. We're turning on to Harbor Street right now. This section of Harbor Street had its pavement treatment done in 2013. Uh, you can compare that to the next section um, that we'll get to when we get to Market Street or Market Avenue. Um, that was done last year in uh, 2017. So this section of pavement was done four years ago. And everybody remembers Peter Sagan charging up this uh, yeah. uh, hill in front of everybody, right? Anyway, so there was back and forth between the comments and stuff. And then I get this text that says, Rosemary and I are dead. That's the way they stop right here. They don't stop So we're passing through now the section of uh, harbor that was just done this last year. If you could look to the up towards Moore Bay Boulevard. Oh, now we'll be going on Piney up to Ridgeway. Um, Piney was another street that we did a, a triple layer project on uh, this year to um, extend the life of the street. How much additional time is it gonna give it? Is it 10 years? Does it give it 10 years? 10 years additional life with this triple air, Rick? We're hoping, hoping uh, for around seven years. Oh. And, and wouldn't be surprised to get as much as 10 here because we've got some very good subgrade here yeah. uh, that we're on top of and it doesn't go a lot. Uh, but as you can imagine, it was really badly weathered. Yeah, so th this was an excellent value, this work here on Piney. Oh yeah, this street was a disaster before. Yeah, to give, to give you a general sense, we, we spent about $112,000 on this entire stretch of Piney, which is probably the longest single stretch of road that we've done uh, outside of Main Street here in town. If we would have done a full <laughs> reconstruction on this, you would have expected somewhere between seven to ten times that cost. Wow. Wow. So, so the bottom line of story to that is that we can do seven to ten more streets 
by taking this approach instead of a reconstruction approach. So again, we're on Ridgeway. Ridgeway had uh, similar techniques that was done were done on Piney. Yeah, I think this I love is a Cape Seal. Cape Seal. Yeah. We're working our way down to Kings to show you what that was a, um, a full grind and reconstruct uh, project that was done a few years ago. that was done uh, let's see 2013 so four years ago we did a full depth reclamation so ground the entire street out and replaced it with uh, new pavement you ground it out to base or Right. Down to down to base, yeah. yeah all the way so to that's the an base. example of the difference but between. Fortunately, we've got really good native soil here, and so we didn't have to stabilize the base, and so we got a pretty good price on this. I think it was around 160, 180 thousand to do this stretch uh, because we could scrimp on the base. If we would have had to replace it, this with regular base course, it would have probably increased that cost two or three times. We're going down Quintana Road here. This this is a 2013 vintage uh, pavement preservation project. We'll get to South Bay Boulevard. That was one of our major works uh, there. We did a um, full reconstruction of the street and stabilized the subgrade with cement. Exactly. So with the, the interesting thing about Quintana is that our consultants actually were recommended that uh, we grind this off and come in with the two to four inch layer of asphalt. That would have cost us about five times what we spent on this. And just doing a cake seal uh, using the, the rubber chip. We find that the rubber chip really adds significant durability to our, our seal coats. Oh, just for your uh, orientation, that's lift station number three uh, right there in the city, one of our sewer lift stations. It comes to the uh, back to the up the hill. The project that actually start right here and they extend all the way to the other side of the overpass. And the thing that's really unique about this full depth reclamation is that uh, we could we did it for about two hundred million thousand dollars around the street, which is uh, funded by the county of Slocar. Yeah, but. We used some mechanized full depth reclamation where we stabilized the existing native base with lime and cement treatment. And because it's automated, we didn't have to pay for subgrade through here. And that again reduced the cost uh, by probably 60, 70%. So you can imagine that it would have cost us well over Um, bike project we did this last last paving year with the green striping along here make it a little bit easier to get across to uh, get, deal with the intersection there in San Jacinto and, and Maine. About three years ago we actually did some striping along here putting in these edge lines um, to narrow the drive width to try to slow traffic coming down uh, the street here a little bit. Get a little visual friction. And I see PD's out with their radar trailer uh, reminding folks that even when school's out, it's still 25 miles an hour. Do you have any records to show that those lines did slow traffic? Um, no, we haven't surveyed. Uh, done speed surveying through here. 
um, sorry, um, Ironwood um, Avenue. This street was uh, uh, redone in 2015, this section here. And we're working our way to uh, Del Mar Park, um, where we've made some improvements to the parking lot. And uh, um, everybody, everybody knows about the pickleball courts that we painted a couple of years ago uh, there. Uh, with help from our friends with the uh, uh, Pickleball Association and the Senior Center. They put all the cows back. There were a bunch of cows out here the other morning. They put them all back? Yeah, they're back. They put them away. At the they managed to get get a hole through the fence, and they were over here. Oh, eating they were on the. Oh, they were out. Or they, they were out eating the church oh, grass. Okay. Oh, I thought you meant they were down here, and you're putting them back farther. No, no, they were over getting woman grass. <laughs> There's another. We're going to take make a stop here. those here in Morro Bay, the world's most difficult miniature golf course. So Del Mar Park, um, from a public works perspective, we've worked on the parking lot, the former hockey rink pickleball courts. Just wondering if uh, Kirk, Eddie, uh, Ikani, you want to say anything about the park in general, its use? Uh, it's a, it, I know it's a very popular park. Very yeah. popular yeah. park, yeah. <laughs> we go just about every weekend, probably in summertime. Uh, we've got birthday parties, family reunions, high school reunions, anything that kind of goes on. Or even some weddings that happen over here, some stuff too as well. Monday through Saturday, 9 to 12, our pickleball courts are pretty well packed. It's operated by Senior Citizen Incorporated, or Active Adults 55 Plus, I think is the new name. <laughs> If they want to reserve a table, do they make reservations? How do they? Yeah, you call me to make a reservation. Uh, you can call the recreation services, and it's it's a pretty pretty reasonable price for for how much you're getting it. All the parks are on a first come first serve basis, but if you would like to reserve them for a party, you can call and make a reservation for it. What aspects of the park are reservable? Um, the hillside area, which is this area up here, with the um, horseshoe pits also, and then the meadow area, which is down next to the playground there and there as well. Those are the two reservable spots at Delmar Park. Not these right here. So we want to take a walk down to the pickleball, pickleball. tennis courts and take a look, see. Yeah. Let's we'll see who's playing, because I can hear him down there. This is what the kids like. Oh, that's, that's how you win. That's it. That's the game. You gotta have the soft game. Are they better than Kurt? Yeah. Oh. Really? I guess it's. I don't play tennis. I play soccer with him. Is he a good player? Yeah, he used to coach for uh, San Luis. Right. He used to coach for the women's team. High school? High school team. Soccer? Is he a player? I tried to play soccer. It's good. Racquetball. Yeah. We get in here and mow occasionally. We'll find out here in a minute. <laughs> This, this dog, these dog parks areas were um, uh, a cooperative project between the city and an organization called the Morro Bay Pups, um, helped fundraise to construct uh, the project. They, uh, the Pups organization uh, 
me see if Mike is here to keep me honest. Uh, or maybe Eddie can. Hmm. They do light maintenance um, types of things, yeah. and then the city does more heavy uh, maintenance. At, yeah, at they'll the do park. small keep up, like of trash and stuff like yeah. that, and then we'll do the more of like the water supplies. Like yep. So we have a large dog area and a small dog area. Yeah, this is highly, it's highly used too, yeah. a lot. On the weekends, this place is packed. <laughs> Any questions? Why don't we let these folks in with their... Uh, Okay, here we are here at Cloisters Park. Um, Cloisters Park and the surrounding natural area is maintained through a uh, landscaping, lighting, benefit assessment district. So um, that's what funds, for the most part, the uh, maintenance at uh, Cloisters Park. Um, again, a very popular uh, park, uh, which is also reservable. It is reservable, yeah. So, um, get groups coming here. I think there was a uh, all years high school reunion yep. here this last year that uh, reserved the park. We're doing another one in the summertime. Too. Okay, very good. Um, some of the recent projects we've worked on, little projects, is um, some rehabbing some of the landscaping around the restroom. And now that we're not in such a strict uh, water conservation, we may start trying to reinvigorate the turf a little bit or figuring out what to do with it. Uh, so we cut off water for the most part for the turf during the worst of the drought, um, but, uh, and it has suffered uh, uh, because of that. The, um, the community has a loose organization that helps us decide what kind of projects um, to work on. One of their desires is to rehab the landscaping in the uh, center median along Coral there. And uh, that, that all that landscaping was put in when the development originally um, was constructed in the mid 90s. Some of it is getting a little bit old and leggy and uh, woody. So they want something that doesn't require so much maintenance, doesn't get so high and uh, less water use. So we're working with them on that. Other ideas for projects out here have been to replace the um, play structure and there's some folks in the Cloisters development that would like to see an adult fitness course around kind of this um, turf area. Anything uh, Kirk or Ikani or Ed want to add uh, to Cloisters? Nice place for an event. We've hosted uh, one of our, our uh, ancillary events to the Amgen Bike Tour, a bike fest in the park, which is a, it, it was a lot of fun actually. We had the, the, the PD out here set up a bike rodeo. So my point is it's a, it's a great location for, for a large scale event. National Lights Out will be out here too for the police awareness. On August 1st, they'll be out here for their police awareness day. So remember that, come out to Cloisters Park on August, August 1st, 1st for National Night Out and uh, visit with our uh, brothers and sisters in the police department. Perfect. Well, this is near the end of the tour. We're going to head back to the office. We're going to make a quick trip down um, 
up coral, I guess, to look at some paving work that we did. Rick's going to con contrast a couple of different projects uh, along there, and then we'll pop back on the freeway at Easter and head back into town. We're skipping the wastewater treatment plant this year, but um, anytime you want to tour, contact Joe Miller of our utilities department, and uh, uh, he can uh, bring you all through that wastewater treatment plant, uh, the desal plant, courtyard area, and uh, uh, make sure that you see what you need to see out there. As you cover the city, it was, was eye-opening when I toured it, so I would encourage people to go. Uh, just the difference between uh, complete reconstruction and... I was looking at Pico Right now, uh, we did a triple layer here on Coral and Siena and Bali. That consists of uh, a Here's Sienna. leveling course that uh, is microsurfacing. Then we put a rubber chip seal down to improve the durability and, and decrease uh, water infiltration. And then we put a, a type 2 micro on top of that. Uh, Andros. By contrast, here's Andros. We did a full depth reclamation here with cement soil stabilization. That little section of Andros cost us 70,000. This whole stretch of Bali with the triple layer only cost us 17,000. Oh, wow. oh, so, you know, we were able to get at least four t four streets for one down here. And that's with the absolute worst uh, subgrade material that we've got in the city underneath these streets. These streets are the oldest in the city as well. They, they uh, this was first subdivided in 1920, is that right? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. Wow. So these, these streets have been here a long, long, long time. Well, I think they were dirt. Everybody's heard dirt my story. With. Yeah. yeah, dirt paths that uh, had red rock put on top of them when they were county, and then um, a slurry seal on top of the red rock, um, <laughs> and an overlay when they became city streets in the 70s. They were never actually constructed as a modern street where you would dig down put base material in first, and then compacted asphalt on top of that. Mm. <coughs> We're just going to adjourn this PWAP meeting and... Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the meeting of the PWAB is adjourned to August 16th. <laughs> <laughs>